There was a time when Sam and Ella's chicken palace led to a meme fest. I remember not getting it instantly until I read the name aloud quickly. Salmonella sounded suspiciously like Salmonella. This is so not what you want to call a business, much less one that hopefully sells fresh and wholesome food. My point is, a name can make or break a business. You can name like a boss, or you can have a name that sucks the life right out of your brand. Today, we're answering the question on every entrepreneur's mind, how do I name my brand for success? And if you want to know more about the important do's and don'ts about naming, click the link in the description below to learn how to make your brand work for you 24-7, like the Fortune 100 companies do. The right name can attract people, evoke the right emotions, and welcome people into your brand. The wrong name can confuse people, send out the wrong message, and be downright annoying. Not convinced? Here's a funny story about a snowblower. Toro, a popular company making snowblowers and other home gadgets, you probably own one yourself. They came out with a product called Snowpup and marketed this specifically to women, single women in particular. And the women responded by closing their wallets. <laughs> that messaging didn't work with women at all. They felt they were being patronized and talked down to. So the company change the name to Snowmaster and presto, that worked like a charm. Why would women want to hear that they need something small and ineffectual to help them like a snow pup? They wanted to use an effective, powerful piece of equipment. Same as the guys out there, they wanted something that would get the job done. Since a poor choice of brand name can potentially destroy your business, how can you avoid making some common mistakes? Get a name that builds you up, not tears you down. A name that triggers the desired emotions in your ideal individuals. Words have meaning, but names build power. What's in a name, asked Shakespeare? I would say just about everything when it comes to brand building. A name is a singular, most powerful brand messenger. It represents identity. Every story starts with a name and it's the same for a brand. So you have to start right. This was always important, but today in the internet age, it's even more vital for several reasons. We see an average of 5,000 ads a day. That's a lot of ads. And we're on information overload. It's difficult for the brain to process all of what we see and read and hear each day. So how is it going to be possible for your brand and your name to make any kind of impact? In my 23 years in business of naming products and brands, I learned that names are more crucial than ever before. Earlier, when you went to the movies, you committed to two hours of your time to whatever it was that you had purchased your ticket to see. Now you can watch five minutes of a movie on Netflix, and if it doesn't snare your interest, you move on to the next movie, the next series, the next documentary, the next special, or onto the next platform. Hulu, Amazon, Prime, HBO goes on and on and on. The options are literally endless, and everyone is something of a professional deleter now. The question is, how do you make people care about your brand? Quick, you have five seconds, go. <laughs> I'm kidding, but only a little. By now, you get the urgency of making a big enough impact in a short enough time. In a matter of seconds, your brand has to make that impact, evoke an emotion and make them pause. Think about it. How many times do you watch in its entirety any ad that plays before a YouTube video? We usually skip at the skippable ones right after the usual five seconds wait time. Do you ever think that th why they keep it at that five second mark? Two reasons. One, they know that if people were forced to watch 20 or 30 second ad, people might just skip the video completely and move on to something else. The second reason is that five seconds is enough time to make an impact on the viewer. If you have watched any of those ads fully, it's either because the product interested you, the ad was really unique, or something else, the visuals, the brand name caught your interest. You have to hook them, and in a few seconds is all you have to compel them. Yes, compel them. Get this, 72% of consumers make purchases based on brand names. And the same number, 72% of brand names are made up of words or acronyms. By creating entirely new words like Etsy or Lexus, or blending two words to make a new words like Groupon or Pinterest, you can create a truly unique name for your business. How do you become compelling? How do you compel people in an instant that there's a promise of a better future here inside your brand? Remember the name you choose is going to have far reaching consequences. The name will be on your product, your stationery, your online and offline ads, on the door of your building, the packaging, the promotional material on every piece of merch and blazoned for all to see and to react to. Most names are based on one of five main categories. Number one, based on the family or founder's name, such as Abercrombie & Fitch, is named after David T. Abercrombie and Ezra Fitch. Number two, metaphoric names. They could be historical or mythical names like Nike, which is the name of the goddess of victory, 
really clever for a sporting good brand or Amazon or Target or Apple or some I created fits this perfectly is Open Road Car for Discover or the Honda Ridgeline Truck or Simple Pleasures for Hershey's or Lyft Sneakers for Puma. A coin name is the third kind of name. We use them every day. Reddit, Instagram, Netflix, Snapchat, all the mother of all made up names, Google from Google, the number with a hundred zeros. There are many ways to coin a name, but when the meaning is obvious or the emotion is obvious and or the spelling is obvious and or the pronunciation is obvious, you got yourself a great coin name, like Red Bull. Or some of the ones I've named like Amavara Sunscreen, Ama meaning mother, Vara Vera meaning truth. Number four, an acronym, IBM, AT&T, or G, are two that are three that are instantly recallable. Then you have descriptive names, which describe the key benefit or promise, such as Payless or Best Buy. Some I did recently are Camp Improv Utopia, which has just opened their fourth location, Mosaic Physical Therapy, Happy Gatherings, which is a party dip company. So when you're creating your brand name, you can use each of these categories for inspiration. And if you want to know more about that, I give a full course on it, and I'll post that in the description to help you get the power name your brand deserves. And here are some of the epic brand name fails that we've seen over time. So you understand how not to name. Sometimes one may aim too low or too local, a name that makes sense in some places, but not in others. In Iran, a popular detergent product was named Barf, B-A-R-F, meaning snow in Persian. Actually, it's pronounced Burf, but the written word is what most people will see, and such a name could never make it to any English-speaking country, particularly one well-versed in American slang. Now, we're all familiar with KFC's tagline, Figure Lincoln Good. They translated this into Chinese, and what they got was, eat your fingers off. Not ideal. Did they use Google Translate? Uh, did they have anyone on this job? I don't know. So Clairol had a product, the Mist Stick which was a curling iron. I would quibble with the name because it's something of a tongue twister, even in English, and can even sound like a mistake. But in German, it became a big problem. Mist is apparently slang for manure. And it is easy to see how that wouldn't work, right? So when you choose your name, think big, think global. Even if your operations are local right now, there is nothing to say that you will not be able to expand to newer territories and you don't want to end up insulting an entire nation or culture someday. So be sure to do your homework and don't use Google Translate. Use a professional to get the right nuance and context. Then some names may be too insider or may try to be too clever. Don't go for something that some people will understand or something that is trendy and cashes in on some current buzzwords. Exclusive is one thing, obscure is quite another. And then there's something that may be open to interpretation and not in a good way. One home accessory company called itself Knobs and Knockers and promised that it would make you love your home again. They may have been trying to be clever, but ended up being suggestive and rather inappropriate. This wouldn't work with some shoppers and you can see why. Next, avoid being big or generic. This was a case with one of my uh, clients who wanted to name their dog training school, dog training school. <laughs> so there's zero uniqueness there and not so memorable. You can see why he came to see me. There's nothing to differentiate this name from literally any other dog training school. Even if you create slight differentiation between the spelling, that will not work for a new brand because Google is going to presume that people were looking for something else and autocorrect. Another thing to avoid is being silly. Someone thought it was hilarious to name a Chinese sunglasses brand Helen Keller. It wasn't. I don't think it's funny. This is offensive. It's not so cool. Then someone came up with Curl Up and Die Salon. Did they realize that D-Y-E sounds the same as D-I-E? And thought they were being cute about wanting to curl up and die? And then there was Anal Tech. I don't need to say anything more than that. So here's how you name your brand to be strong, unique, and successful. First, think flexible. Remember the internet is constantly changing and throwing up new opportunities, so you don't want to be stuck with a brand that leaves little room for growth and adaptation. Think of new territories, new products, new cultures, some things in the future. That dog training school we spoke about earlier, it's not only incorrect because it's too generic, it doesn't offer the opportunity to branch into pet accessory sales or dog grooming or so on and so forth. You will grow in places that you yet do not know. Secondly, you want to be memorable. Dog training school, again, fails on this parameter or even something like A1 laundry, which is easily confused with A plus laundry. So you want to be original and unique to snag attention. Thirdly, aim for timelessness. Trends are good, but they are ephemeral. Think timeless like, say, Nike, a name known for years. It's never going to get old. 
Fourth, make it uniquely your own. Own your brand in a way that sets it apart from all else. Not only that, check that the name is available. You don't want to infringe on someone else's trademark, copyright, or patent name. That is a whole other headache you don't want. And lastly, uncomplicate it. Sometimes, in a bid to be clever, it can become incomprehensible. In a bid to be different, it can become arcane and difficult to remember or even pronounce. Remember how Jeff Bezos wanted to go with the name Cadabra for Amazon? But when his lawyer went, huh? Cadabra? He realized that wouldn't fly. So keep these five mantras in mind. A, don't be vague. Be clear and state your purpose. B, be descriptive and give a hint of what you're promising. C, differentiate. Catch the eye with how you can be different. And D, think big brand globally. And finally, E, very importantly, think about what emotion you want to evoke and try to name accordingly. So get going, shortlist some names and see how they fare against each of these elements of a strong brand name we talked about and get a brand name that doesn't suck the life right out of your brand. I hope you liked this video. For more videos that you can use as your own branding masterclass for becoming an inspiration in million, subscribe to my channel. I release new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. To learn more about branding like the Fortune 100 companies, click the link in the description below. You don't want to miss this one. And always remember, this is where it all begins. Love what you do and love how you do it. Thanks for watching. Don't miss out on a single thing. Subscribe below. And here's something else I think you'll love.